Decision making can get messy very quickly. If you have thousands of possible outcomes and a lot of what if questions, you get to this point where any choice feels like a gamble. When reality is too chaotic to make predictions, Monte Carlo simulations, which today's video is all about, won't tell you exactly what will happen, but they can show you what probably will. Imagine you decided to invest into your future self, but you're not quite sure yet what asset class to pick. You might start comparing the average annual appreciation of real estate versus the stock market, for example, and things don't seem too complicated at first. But the more you learn, the more unanswered questions you have about all the things that can go wrong. What if the stock market crashes in the next few years? What if local policy changes cap off the maximum rent I can ask for? What if mortgage interest rates change or the index fund returns slow down over time? There's simply a lot of what-if questions, and while some scenarios seem more likely than others, it is still very hard to say what a realistic outcome would look like. We can't just work through every possible option. But thanks to key statistical concepts like the central limit theorem, which says that averages from repeated samples tend to follow a normal distribution, and the law of large numbers, which tells us that the more we repeat an experiment, the closer the average gets to the true value, we can often avoid running the full experiment and still compute useful, reliable results. Monte Carlo simulations help us to predict possible outcomes by using randomness. If we can describe all our influencing factors in terms of probability distributions, we can simulate an outcome by drawing random samples from those distributions to create one possible reality. If we do that over and over again, potentially even tens of thousands or millions of times, we will get another probability distribution that represents the possible results and the corresponding likelihood of them appearing. The Monte Carlo method takes the world as it is, often too complex to comprehend, and it turns it into easily digestible insights that give us a clear overview of what to expect or what to plan with, and the worst and best case scenarios, as well as their chances of becoming true. So let's say we have $100,000 and have to make the decision what to invest it in. Let's start off really simple and just look at one random variable, the returns. A normal distribution is described through two variables, the mean and the standard deviation. For annual stock market returns, we can assume those to be 7% and 15%, and for our real estate option to be 4% and 2%. Just by looking at those numbers, we can already tell that the stock market returns are high on average, but they also tend to fluctuate much more. But what effect does that have over 30 years? To figure that out, we draw our random sample return from our probability distribution year by year. Repeat that process for 30 years, 10,000 times. And take a look at the distribution of possible outcomes we got. Now we got a pretty good estimate for what to expect for either option. In the real world, those returns don't tell us the full story though. There are many other influences that vary over time. So to make this scenario a bit more realistic, let's add a probability distribution for dividend yields and behavioral drag on the stock market side, as well as the net rental yield and unexpected expenses on the real estate side. This is where Monte Carlo simulations really shine. When scenarios get complex enough that we can't possibly track them in our heads anymore, simulating a lot of cases and evaluating them statistically gives us a comprehensible picture of the chaos and a realistic expectation. Of course, it might not always be an option for us to set up a simulation every time we have to make a decision in an uncertain environment. Oftentimes, we don't even know the underlying probabilities describing the situation. But I think there is a general, more philosophical takeaway from all of this. Embrace uncertainty. It's just part of reality. And optimize for many possible futures and not just one. It helps to keep in mind that the best and worst case results are always found at the tips of that curve, and that no matter how much or how little we want them, they are not what we will encounter on an everyday basis. So that's the Monte Carlo method, an effective tool for tackling complex problems using randomness and probability. From forecasting stock markets to simulating climate systems, it plays a crucial role in how we model uncertainty make predictions, and solve problems that are too complex for exact solutions. Thank you for watching.